Hello everyone, it's Paul here. I uh, hope you can hear my voice. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, here we are. It is uh, Monday 1st of October 2018 and here we are for uh, I think what is the 10th session of the Mastering the 4Ms of uh, Trading. We, as I said, we're into October already. The 2018 is flying by but there's been lots for us to, to learn and work with and uh, that will carry on throughout our uh, sessions here for the Admiral Markets Mastering the 4Ms of Trading webinar series. Series. For those who don't know me, my name is Paul Wallace. I'm a trader, analyst, and uh, coach. Uh, and as we go through this series, you'll learn more and more about uh, how I trade and how I actually view the markets. And hopefully, that will help you uh, guide you in your own trading decisions. As always, we'll just look to begin with a quick risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 83% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with Admiral Markets UK. You consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. Please ensure you fully understand all risks involved. Forex and CFD trading is a risky activity and this presentation and accompanying video should not be taken as advice for investing as they only represent the personal opinion of the authors. This presentation and accompanying video is for information and educational purposes only. As of August 2018, the regulation within the European Union differs for retail and professional clients. In our presentation, we use demo trading accounts where all clients could still use a high leverage in a risk-free environment. Before opening a live trading account, please consider the differences between retail and professional trading terms. Retail clients benefit from an unlimited negative balance protection. Professional clients at Admiral Markets UK receive a compensation of account deficits with the maximum payout of 50,000 sterling as per our negative balance protection policy. Admiral Markets offer a, a wide range of uh, products and services and uh, one of their uh, the sort of two popular trading instruments is the DAX 30 where you have a uh, typical spread of 0.8 points uh, and also Euro Dollar which can also have 0.8 pips of typical spread during market hours. Um, they also provide the MT4 and MT5 uh, Admiral Markets MetaTrader Supreme Edition and if you have any questions about uh, the uh, the sort of the platforms or the offering or in particular you know the risk disclaimers then by all means please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very very happy to uh, to answer your questions and guide you So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we are. Let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the sort of the mastering the four M's of trading. I, I appreciate some of you are uh, have been joining us for the the entire series. Some of you are new. Uh, for those of you who are new, I would uh, suggest that you'll find that most of the previous uh, webinars have uh, are in the uh, Admiral Markets uh, webinar archive, either on YouTube or on their Facebook page, uh, and they are a a fantastic tool to be able to bring yourself up to speed on the elements that we have covered during the uh, the previous uh, nine sessions. For those of you, you know, what drives me is, well, I, I describe myself as a discretionary-based method trader. Uh, primarily, I'm a dominant trend swing trader. I like to keep things simple, and I like to merge fundamentals, technical sentiment, and geopolitics into my trading decisions. Uh, primarily, I sort of uh, trade FX indices and commodities. I, I will look at equities, okay? I, I will look at fixed income, but as a general rule, most of my work is FX indices. And within that, I'm always looking to buy strength and sell weakness. That's that's my uh, preference and ideal. I personally prefer like to, to use pullbacks for uh, for entries, uh, and I like to sort of trade across the, the weekly, the daily, and the four hourly charts. For the uh, little bit of intraday trading that I do, I'm primarily uh, a mean reversion trader, and that's something we'll touch upon later on in this series. As always, my uh, my expectations for the uh, the sessions for me is to educate you about the four M's of trading. So I want you to be able to go away and begin to analyze any market and be able and ready to trade it. And also, you know, through some of the sessions later on, we will talk about raising your self-awareness, about how you manage risk and about how you manage yourself. For yourself, you know, what I what I ask for is that I appreciate we do have a broad range of experience in the room and that, you know, we have a 45 minute time limitation. So sometimes that means I can't go into the, the topics with the breadth and the depth that uh, some people would like. But what I'm always going to try and do is, is focus on tools that you can use tomorrow that you can take away and sort of, you know, build into your trading view uh, as it is tomorrow. As always, as I say, if there, you know, if there are any uh, further questions, then by all means, get in touch with your account representative and they'll be they'll be very happy to. Uh, they'll be very happy to help you. 
so four M's of trading okay if you've just completely new to us right what we talk about is that uh, you know we talk about that when traders are managing the those four M's of trading markets method money and myself when they're doing that well and when they're managing uh, those four areas well that's when they tend to sort of uh, perform well as traders if on that hind other side, if you're having a couple of challenges with your trading, then I can guarantee that the, one of the problems is probably in one of those four areas. And it's about you being able to analyze and work out as quickly as possible which area that four M's is, is suddenly giving you a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge. You know, and what we find is that, you know, the, uh, you know, there's, there is that sort of sweet spot, you know, the, the sweet spot, the, uh, the good traders I've worked with over the years, you know, they are, they're really in charge of those four M's of trading. Okay. They're really very, very good at mastering them. Under Understanding the markets trade, understanding the, the method that they uh, they trade, and whether it's in the you know, in aligned with the correct market environment. They're exceptionally good at money management in, across all elements of uh, risk management, trade management, etc., capital management, and they're also very good at managing themselves. Okay, and as, as I said, it's that sweet spot of managing those four M's there. So um, what we talked about, okay, and I, I always start off with uh, just going through a few of the slides that we've covered just to, to give you a recap. And the reason being is that the more you hear it from me, the more you follow it, the more you, uh, you know, you live and breathe it, well, then, you know, the, the, the easier it becomes to, to sort of become part of your trading routine. And that's that's where I uh, that's where I want you to be. So what we talked about was, you know, we started with the sort of the four M's of, you know, the sort of markets and moving into the method. And what I talk about is, you know, regardless of what you trade, whether you're trading, you know, sort of daily charts on gold, five minute charts, you're a dollar, monthly charts on the DAX. OK, whatever you do, you do these four, four or five steps to begin with. Define your levels of support and resistance. Step two, see if there's a trend. Step three, wait for price to see how it reacts at those key sort of support and resistance levels. Step four, look for if there are any particular price action signals at those support and resistance levels. And then as we'll move on to, is that a case of that's part of a bigger chart pattern, which is what we'll, uh, what we'll cover in a few sessions time. At the moment, what we've been doing is, you know, we've been looking at uh, markets, but also we've been, you know, versioning it into the, the method area, okay, of the second of those four M's. And in particular, the last few sessions, we've talked about, you know, looking at those price action signals, and we've covered that. Uh, I'm going to do another one of those today so that you're building up a, uh, a little armory of various price action signals that, um, that you can uh, employ in your own, uh, in your own trading. So, you know, remember, step one, whenever you want to look at a chart, you want to be working out where those levels of support and resistance, right? Start the monthly chart, work down to the weekly and daily, draw in those horizontal levels of support and resistance. You should also be taking into account any of real major psychological round numbers, okay? So, whatever that might be for every particular uh, instrument, you know, um, you know, for the big FX markets, dollar indexes, you know, has been knocking about 95, okay, for, for the last few months. That's, you know, that becomes a, that becomes a major, a major number so you want to you want to be aware of that and you want to be aware of you know where markets are trading in relation to that and also for new trades you can use fractals which is an indicator on the uh, admiral markets uh, metatrader four and five um, uh, editions of their packages or the platforms so you can use uh, you can utilize those to, to help give uh, guide your eye as to where uh, particular levels of interest would be for our for ourselves as traders step two define the trend all right what I need to know is that can you actually identify whether an instrument is trending or consolidating? Sounds very simple, and it should be, but a lot of people get it wrong. Okay, a lot of people force it, and, and there's no need to there's no need to force it at all. A good trend leaps off the chart at you. Simple as that. I say that every week. Good trend leaps off the chart at you. If you have to force it, it isn't there. So you know, if you're having to force it, move on. So is it, you know, it's a case of you being able to sort of just work out and understand, okay, you know, that, you know, when a market is consolidating like this DAX weekly chart, okay, you know, it's consolidating on the left-hand side and then it breaks out and then it carries on in a nice uptrend, all right, and that's what, um, that's what I need you to be able to, to understand, to just identify that very, very quickly. As I said, if it's a uh, good trends leap off the chart at you. What you can also use is uh, moving averages, which we covered in one of the sessions. All right. So on my screens, you'll see I notice uh, I use the blue 20 period simple moving average, the red 50 simple moving average and the green 200 simple moving average. All right. And that's just very simple. I'm using them not for uh, not particularly for moving average crossovers. I'm using them to help identify, you know, uh, strength and trend of momentums uh, and also to identify areas of dynamic support and resistance. All right. You know, there are lots of the uh, trading algos out 
out there or traders themselves who will quite happily simply trade bounces off the uh, the moving averages as they as and when they act like a uh, like a a simple form of dynamic support or resistance So, you know, what's, what we're looking for is, you know, step three is, you know, just having a little bit of patience to be able to see how uh, price reacts at that key support resistance levels. You know, what does that actually mean? What I say every week is, you know, we're always looking for kind of a confluence of events. We're looking for, you know, several things to come together at one point, And that is what will actually give to uh, that is what will actually give us a, an idea of, you know, where to where to enter, where we want to do our business. Right? We're looking for somewhere between two to four things to come together. OK, at a particular time and place and level. And that is where we are looking to sort of to, to place our trades. OK, that's where we're actually looking to, to, to do our business. What I say every week is, you know, and it might sound, you know, simplistic for me to go over it again is, but, you know, when markets are bullish, you want to be a buyer. When markets are bearish, you want to be a seller. Define the trend and trade with it. No trend, no trade, no signal, no trade, right? And the, the reason that, about that is, you know, yes, there are lots of people who like to trade reversals, but, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, for, you know, for people who are, let's say, new to trading, then, you know, they're, they're sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're finding their feet, learning their skills. You know, we want to keep it simple. All right, when markets are bullish, we want to be a buyer. When markets are bearish, we want to be a seller. All right, and that's that's what we're looking to do. That's where that's the way we're looking to operate. So there we go. You know, step four: define level support resistance. Step two: define the trend. Step three: wait for price to react at key support and resistance levels. It could be big round numbers, moving averages, horizontal levels. And then step four: well, you know, we start to look for particular price action signals at those uh, that those levels that have interested us. And that's what we've focused on for most of the last month. Okay, in these sessions, just looking at particular price action signals that we can that we can take and work with and use on our uh, on our trading journey. And that's where you know. We've been focusing a lot on that kind of market to method, and we've got we've got another couple of weeks of uh, doing the method, and then we'll be sort of moving across towards the the, the money element of it as well. In case in terms of the uh, the risk management side. So, uh, you know, we've talked about it, OK, you know, how uh, you can find thousands and thousands of trading and investing methods, but it all really boils down to one of two styles. You're either trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. And it, and it is quite as simple as that. All right. You know, as, a, as I said right at the start, I like to keep it as simple as possible. All right. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to be too smart for my own good, because invariably as a trader, when I try to be too smart for my own good, it, it rarely works out well for me. I just keep it simple and do simple things well time and time again that's where it, that's where we want to be i personally prefer to trade bounces a part of as a part of a pullback in a trend and the reason being is a i can get it in at a better price and also i know if i'm wrong far soon and and, and that might surprise people to understand that but you know it, it's um i i actually am very happy with that okay if if my trade isn't going to work out i'd like to know as soon as possible so that i can you know sort of manage my capital manage my emotional capital as well and actually just get out of the trade and move on and that's that's what we're uh, that's what we particularly look for so uh, you know we, i do trade breakouts but primarily it's mostly bounces you know we'll talk a little bit about bounces and breakouts today but you know uh, primarily that's what i have learned you know is, is where i'm at my happiest doing business so if you remember we've uh, over the last uh, month or two we've gone through quite a few of these uh, price action signals so you know we had the uh, the pin bar okay which is a very simple rejection candle okay that you can see there you know we were talking about how it must have you know for for it to be a a proper good pin bar you know it must have the open and close within the previous bar must have a candle wick two to three times the the length of the the, the body we want to see a long news long nose protruding from all the other bars okay and you know the the you know the really good ones they stick out and they're very they're very obvious right so um you know good pin bars are quite prevalent you can see them on the market and it's about you know um just making sure they adhere to those little simple rules to make sure that we're uh, we're working with a uh, a good a good possible setup And, uh, you know, what we've uh, talked about is, you know, you know, how I define it is that pin bars are kind of likely indicators of where the biggest predators are lurking. All right. They show rejection of a particular area or direction. And, uh, you know, as, as a private trader, well, it's, it's pointless for us to try and fight them. I'm not trying to do that. OK, what I want to do is work with them to show the likely short term direction. All right. And ideally look to trade with that. Uh, ideally look to trade with that trend. So, you know, when I see 
pin bars, you know, occurring at the end of a little bit of a pullback, okay, in, in, an, in an uptrend, for example, then, you know, at that, and that pullback ends at, uh, you know, maybe a level of support resistance or, a, you know, dynamic level. Then I am very, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, that's when I'm getting interested. That's when I'm looking for it because I've got that confluence of events. I've got three or four things all starting to come together, at you know, one or two times, and that's what actually gives me a good. Uh, that's what gives me a great, um, a great view as to what, um, as to what's going on. Okay. So we, we did uh, pinballs, and as I said, I just you know one or two slides in every one. I want every week for you to, to learn, you know, for it to sort of you know be rammed home. Okay, what we're looking for, right? The more you hear it, the more you the more you uh, stick with it. Okay. Second one we covered was an engulfing candle, right? An outside bar, some people might call it. Uh, the high and low of the bar engulf the range of the preceding bar. They're less frequent than pinballs, but they can be very powerful, especially powerful when you know when they are at the end of a, a trend because it can uh, signal a, a significant change in the uh, underlying trend and sentiment and that's what we're interested in so as i said it happened rarely but uh, they are high probability they demonstrate total overwhelm right so we're looking to trade them at the ends of trends you know as they're a reversal pattern so we're looking for a bullish engulfing candle at the end of a downtrend and we're looking for a bearish engulfing candle at the end of an uptrend uh, and then what we look to do is to trade in the direction of the close of the engulfing bar that's what we're looking to do that's what we're allowing to try to operate so uh, we did uh, pin bars, we did um, engulfing candles. What we did, I think, in last week's session is, you know, we, we I talked about uh, a particular just how to trade a pullback in a trend in terms of a three-bar reversal setup, which is very, 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 very simple, okay, is what we looked at. It's just a, uh, you know, a, a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic. We're looking to, you know, define if there's a trend, which is what we're already expecting. We're looking to wait for a pullback to support resistance. Well, you know, that would be part of our uh, normal, uh, normal sort of routine anyway. And actually what we needed to see was once we were at that level of support resistance, we needed to see, you know, we need to see two seller bars and, okay, two red bars followed by a buyer bar, right? That's what, you know, there's a three bar reversal. And for a short, okay, when price is, you know, beneath the averages and, and rallies up into uh, resistance, we need to see uh, two buyer bars followed by a seller bar. And that's actually, that's actually what we were looking to, uh, that's what we were looking to actually to, to, to find out. What we also said was that you know it, it's a you know it's a very simplest thing you know really for you know you're looking for two red bars followed by a green bar at, at a level of support for a for a yeah for an uptrend. If that green your know, buy bar is a pin bar or an engulfing candle or an inside bar or something like a spinning top, well then that gives us more confidence. Okay, you know we can see in that particular example there. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see, excuse me, you can see price was in, in an uptrend, price uh, re, with tr <laughs> retraced, retraced to its support level. All right, we can see there was two uh, nice seller bars followed by a, uh, a nice green bullish pin bar. And then we can see that, you know, price moved away from that very nicely. OK, and, uh, and and it moved on. So, you know, what we like to see is if that, uh, you know, that green bar, OK, and, the, and an uptrend is, uh, is you know, a pin bar and a golfing candle inside bar or doja spinning top that makes us uh, that makes us happier as well and that's that's what we're looking for remember this is supposed to be just a very simple mechanical way to trade uh, pullbacks in an uh, in a trend uh, so yeah, we you know we had a little look at that. There's you know there's a few examples here. This you know this was the the you know the daily chart of the Aussie dollar. Okay, just showing you just you know across all the time frames. You know there was uh, we could see we were in a downtrend and uh, price would uh, pull back into the the area of where you know where the sort of the 20 and the 50 period moving average was, in particular the 50 period moving average, and just showing that you know it, it, it's you know over a, over a sort of a three month period. It you know it it put in sort of like six you know six of these setups that um that sort of uh, ran with it. So it's um, it's a case of you know that you know when a trend a good trend exists that's what we're that's what we're expecting we're looking for and that's what um, we're just looking to uh, yeah just looking to sort of uh, uh, trade our way so we uh, yeah we just uh, keep a keep a keep an eye on that so yeah so as I said the three bar reversal is just it's a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic you know just that's it all right to find if there's a trend, wait for a pullback to support resistance. For a long, you need two seller bars followed by a buyer bar. For a short, you need two buyer bars followed by a seller bar. 
we talked about that you know you're probably looking for about a one and a half reward to risk ratio on your um, on your trade that's you know that's for for your targets that's what we were looking to uh, that's what we were looking to achieve some people might go you know want to to sort of go reach for a, a further target or to have a trading stop and that's that's okay you know as as you as you'll learn through this this series okay it's about um it's about finding the it's about finding the way that works the best for yourself. Okay, about finding the way that is um, is you know the uh, the most suitable and easy for you to consistently trade and follow time after time after time. So yeah, some of you might wish to uh, sort of have you know trailing stops because that's the way you like to trade already. That's that's absolutely that's absolutely fine, okay. But as you know, for for a target, we suggest sort of about one and a half reward to risk ratio, okay, on the, for for that particular trade setup. So uh, we did uh, pin bars, we did engulfing candles, we've done three bar reversals. So today I thought we'd have a little look at the inside bar, okay? Pretty much the, pretty much the opposite of the uh, engulfing candle, all right, or the uh, or the outside um, bar, right? Because where here we have is the high and low of the bar is fully within the range of the preceding bar, right? How I like to talk to it uh, is is for you to think about it almost like um, almost like a like a like a human like a human being in terms of it's a case of you know human beings we surge and then we rest okay we surge and then we rest that's that's what we do and and markets are a reflection of that psychology and so you know that's when we see markets surge then they have a have a, a little rest and very often the the rest is the inside bar because the market just contracts it's taking a breather before it makes its next move and that's what we're trying to catch the sort of you know the pullback the surge okay then they have a little rest and then this next surge and that's what we're looking we were looking to to try and position ourselves to catch the next surge so uh, here we have some uh, examples okay here's we've got some uh, examples of inside bars okay you know as i said it's, it's about the range being inside the the range of the uh, of what's quite often called the mother bar all right the the main bar you can see the one on the far right okay you can actually see you know the wick of the uh, the candle pushes up above the uh, above the high of the preceding bar that means it's not an inside bar okay some people would call an inside bar based off on the body but uh, it's not the way i trade i you know i i look to use all areas of the uh, i look to use all area of the bar okay including the including the wick so you know for an inside bar for it to be an inside bar for me what i need to see is that you know the, the effectively the high and the low of the bar is is within the range of the uh, of the preceding bar okay not just the not just the sort of open and close but the the entire range of the trade that's um that's what i uh, that's what i'm looking for So um, I think uh, Christine said there that she was uh, perhaps losing a little bit of uh, audio there. I hope uh, hope that um, I hope that's okay. I, I can certainly uh, see that the sort of the audio is working and people are uh, people listen. Christine, you might just want to check if that's um, check if that's a connection thing at uh, at your uh, at your particular end. So um, you know, this is just um, you know examples of you know, and, and uh, you know, I particularly like to see them on uh, um, uh, on particularly on you know on on sort of longer time frames. You know, you'll see that you know things like weekly charts, monthly charts. You will see that you know inside bars show up quite a bit. Okay, inside bars, you know, uh, they will show up quite a bit. Okay, so it's um, you know you, you know it's all with these things. If you're new to trading, just uh, take a moment, go away, have a little look through some old charts. It could be anything. You know, it can be really test yourself on on anything. That's why I suggest just you know pull up a chart of anything. It could be anything, right? Just test yourself going through, just trying to identify. You know, where were the pin bars? Where were the engulfing candles? Were there any three bar reversals in the trend? 
and also you know were there any particular inside bars did we see any sort of inside bars there that you know were uh, that were suitable and, and met with uh, our uh, requirement our uh, requirements for uh, for a trade setup okay and i think what you'll do is you know if you if you do a little give yourself a few exercises like that then what actually happens is you start to uh, you start to get a you know a much better uh, handle on how the market is uh, operating how it's how it's how it's being driven and how it's printing because you're learning to to read it it's, think of it as almost like um, it's like trying to read a um, uh, you know, like a sheet of music okay if, if some of you are musicians it's about learning to understand how to, to sort of read the market like a like a yeah like a like a music like a sheet of music So, you know, as I said, primarily I like to um, look to trade them as uh, pullbacks in a in a trend. Okay, we will, I'm going to show you both ways, but as a general rule, as usual, I, I like prefer to like to trade them as pullbacks in a trend. Uh, and it's possible for you to do things like, you know, for the longer term traders, for things like weekly and daily setups, you can use the four hours to, to execute and uh, manage. Uh, and you can, you know, decide the entry and the break of the bar or, or break of the range based on the size. Okay, so sometimes sometimes you might want to uh, to sort Sort of trade the break of the inside bar other times you might actually want to trade the break of the mother bar okay the range of the mother bar a lot of that will depend upon the uh, lot depend upon the uh, the sort of the scale and the scope of the inside uh, bar it's <clears throat> excuse me it can be uh, it can be sort of just uh, you can have a, a very simple you know a very simple rule that maybe you just follow the um, uh, the break of the range that might be your particular uh, might, might be your particular uh, tactic you know just to sort of the break of the entire mother you know the um, uh, uh, mother candle range okay that's you know it's 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 about having something that's very just simple that you can just follow consistently that's that's the um, that's where we look at it as always sometimes you can get false breakouts so just be uh, just be aware of them okay if the inside bar just has a little bit of a breakout just to suck in some orders so just uh, just be aware of that just uh, just you know just factor that into your uh, factor that into your trading view you know I, ideally as I said you know I prefer to see them trending working in best in trending markets all right where they can be a continuation signal so the market may have dropped then actually the market pulls back as a little bit of a pullback and it ends on an inside bar okay the pullback ends on an inside bar and that's you know becomes a, it's almost like a continuation signal for the uh, the the dominant trend to re-exert itself all right and that's that's what um that's what we're interested in you know especially when we see it as a bit of a, a bit of a, a stalling or a stopping signal that can be um yeah that can be quite um that can be quite something all right so uh you know just as i said look for a identify a trend look for a pullback and then if we start to see inside bars at the ear you know after the at the end of a pullback well that gives us a you know a trade um a, you know a trade setup that we'd uh, that we'd be happy to work with And you know, they can also work in their breakouts, you know, so, uh, you know, if you are a breakout trader, you know, how you would you look at it? Well, you know, you'd uh, you'd wait for the breakout to occur. <clears throat> wait for the breakout to occur. And then you wait for an inside bar to be printed afterwards. You can probably see there on that chart there. That I think that was a I think that's a sort of 15-minute chart on the DAX there. You know, sort of early morning breakout, price breaks out. It then puts in a uh, puts in its inside bar there. Okay, small bar, well within the range. Okay, of the uh, of the preceding bar. And then we can see that actually that you know that that bar breaks and and uh, and and it, you know and it continues to drop. And that might be the way for you to to trade it as uh, as part of a uh, as part of a breakout strategy so uh, you know in particular case here it's, it's actually this sort of uh, here we go, let's just use try and use the um Let's try and use one of the elements okay so we can see that you know we start to get a little bit of a trend then actually invariably what we have is that uh, price does sort of uh, price falls back a bit okay it uh, creates a uh, sort of almost a flag pattern okay uh, and what we can see is that uh, this candle here okay it's uh, it effectively is just the you know it's an inside bar it's it's bullish you know we want to be a bullish buyer okay as we uh, Get to see the, uh, the the break of the uh, of the trade, uh, and that's what we're uh, that's what we're particularly looking at. That's what we're particularly interested. Okay, just you know, prices in putting in it, starting in a trend. Okay, it surges, then it rests a little bit, and at the end of that rest period, is an inside bar before uh, before the market surges again, and that's uh, that's what we're looking for, ladies and gentlemen.
So yeah, as, as I said, also you know it can be used as for breakouts, all right? But it's uh, it's a case of you know you, you wait for the breakout to occur, wait for the breakout to occur, then wait to see if an inside bar is printed and it's actually trading that inside bar. That it becomes your uh, that becomes your opportunity. This particular case, you can see you know there's uh, you know price is just going nowhere for the uh, for the start of the session. Then it breaks to the south side. Okay, once it breaks, it creates a uh, uh, creates an inside bar. We can see there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a false breaker on the next uh, on the next sort of candle. Okay, there's a little bit of a false breaker back up to back north. All right, but you realistically would be you know we'd only really be looking to be to be biased in terms of you know looking to trade this to to the short side on this uh, on this stock because of uh, waiting for that. Uh, and we can see that price you know runs down there quite nicely for the next uh, four or five uh, next four or five candles. Yeah, here's, a, here's an example, a big different one. Okay, gold on uh, the weekly chart. We can see gold had actually been in quite a um, quite a big pattern, all right, for uh, you know for for the best part of the year. What we had seen is that you know gold was just in a you know big um, sort of a big range there. Okay, big topping range there between you know really from the start of the year through till about May time. We can see is that price actually broke out of it. Price moved down, and then actually price sort of just you know fell sideways and uh, and copied up those pin bars and uh, oh, sorry, copied you know, uh, 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 <laughs> sort of just printed those inside bars. And we can see actually this is on a weekly chart, so it was actually you know the the inside bars were getting smaller and smaller. Just remember, it's the market's just taking its rest after it had broken out. And then what it does is it actually explodes out, okay? Explodes out of the blocks there, uh, and invariably it's you know it just starts to uh, it starts to drop very very swiftly, and we can see that that you know that became quite some uh, that became quite some move. So so you know it is possible to trade it as part of you know of pullbacks and uh, but also as breakouts as when it becomes very clear that there is a there is a range being broken out of and actually you know we can see that uh, we see exactly what we're looking for and it's uh, you know it's also you know what you'll find much more uh, interesting when you start to see a couple of inside bars together okay that's just showing you that you know the market is coiling up the market is like a, it's like a coil spring it's getting worked up and bound 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 and we're waiting for it to explode out of the blocks because you know that's that's the sort of uh, that's the trade side that um, that we want to be on with our own, own particular efforts So you know, if we're going to trade them, how, how do we actually look to uh, how do we look to take our trades? How do we look to to operate there? Well, you know, the, the you know two very sort of simple entry criteria that we're going to talk about to today is a sort of a safe standard one, and then also a 50% stop loss one uh, as well for an for an inside bar. For um, if, for uh, just you know for the standard the sort of safe entry well you know what we look to do is you know when once we identify an inside bar okay and we can identify the uh, the let's say the market environment that that particular instrument is in then you know we're able to enter on the break of the high or the low of that candle normally that you know that's normally sort of that's somewhere between two and ten pips depending on the direction and the uh, and the spread of the instrument. And then what we'd look to do is we'd look to place our stop loss on the other side of the bar, okay, on the far side of the bar. So it gives us, you know, it's a, it's a safe entry, but it also just generally requires, you know, a good move afterwards, so as to give us a uh, a healthy reward to risk in our trade. And that's um, that, you know, that you need to sort of make sure you you don't lose sight of. The other option is to use a 50% stop loss. So this is probably more um, more uh, useful or more interesting to those people who have a, let's say, have a more aggressive risk profile. Okay, that um, that you use a 50% stop loss. So it's you know enter on the break of the uh, of the high. Okay, for a, for a buyer or on the low of it for a, for a short. You know, usual sort of two to ten pips depending on the the size and the direction of the uh, of the candle. But then actually, what we do is our stop loss is placed approximately 50% of away from it from the uh, you know it's 50% of the range of the bar. The good thing about this is it's you know it is a good option when you're joining a strong trend because your uh, reward to risk ratio gets um, gets you know is, is is very attractive and it's very attractive very swiftly. 
Okay. The uh, the downside is that you know if if the price retraces a little bit further, well then you know you can be you can be stopped out. So you know there's there's you know with trading what you'll realize is there's there is no perfection. All right, there is no perfection. It's about just finding simple ideas that you are happy to consistently execute day after day, trade after trade, week after week, month after month. That's what we're actually looking for here. Okay, that's what we're particularly uh, focusing on. So there, um, there you go, ladies. I mean, that was a uh, just a little look at inside bars, and maybe we'll have a little look at uh, at the chart at the moment. Okay, so uh, remember, what we're going to be talking about, and we're you know, going to build slowly but surely. Is we're going to build our own sort of four M's por for portfolio to have a look at. That's going to include the dollar index, and then the 28 other major pairs. And that's effectively pound and uh, Europe, uh, Swiss franc, okay, Japanese yen, Aussie, US. Uh, Kiwi dollar and uh, Canadian dollar all together those kind of all those majors and uh, building you know the uh, the sort of the uh, um, uh, portfolio around them with also with their uh, particular uh, cross currencies with them so uh, to, to give us lots of opportunity in terms of other instruments we're going to be looking at okay I'm going to have some focus on we want to be looking at the uh, the American major indexes okay as well as the European ones so FTSE and uh, DAX we'll also have a look at the Asian ones things like uh, the Nikkei uh, with regards to commodities okay sort of you know things like you know the the hard oil gold and silver is worth keeping a, a, an eye on and you know and and perhaps you might have a perhaps you might have a particular interest in the uh, soft agrees okay the wheat soy sugar soybeans cotton and cocoa that you know that only only you would know that yourself um in terms of uh, equities well you know we'll we'll take a look at them occasionally for ones that are uh, that are of interest to us okay so uh, you know when we start to see things like the fang so facebook uh, amazon apple netflix google okay and and other ones that might be of uh, might be of interest you know you, you might as well put them in there, okay, to, to sort of have a look. Uh, and also you have the uh, opportunity to sort of look and uh, to sort of work with and trade crypto. Okay, now uh, um, uh, Admiral Markets offer a uh, offer a, a range of uh, crypto products and services, or so Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Ripple, etc. And so there's, uh, you know, it becomes very quick for you to be able to, to sort of keep an eye on uh, the kind of money flows between uh, uh, crypto and the, let's say the kind of old FX markets. So ladies and gentlemen, remember, you know, when we're looking at those four M's of trading, okay, we, you know, the, we're always looking to effectively to, to manage those for the four M's of trading, it's markets, method, money, and myself. So ask yourself this question, are, uh, are they all in alignment for you in, in your own trading? Are there particular areas that uh, you could do better? You know, is there one of those areas that you find yourself weak on? Then, you know, be honest with yourself, you know, and uh, sort of have a look at what needs to be done to uh, sort of, to uh, you know, achieve being able to overcome those obstacles. Because the more you do that, the stronger your confidence will uh, will become. And it's you know it's quite simple that you know if if they are not uh, if they're not all in alignment then you shouldn't really expect outsized returns because the uh, it's just uh, unlikely to to happen as I said if there's uh, traders who are managing all four of them really well tend to do tend to do well themselves ones who are sort of uh, weak or losing in that particular uh, space then they you know they they themselves have a have you know not unusual to have a uh, have a couple of challenges themselves. So uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, if there's uh, any questions you might have after this session, don't be uh, afraid to get in touch with your uh, account representative. You can call them on that London number, 020-7726-4003, or you can email them at hello at admiralmarkets.com. They've got the uh, YouTube, okay, there's the YouTube channel there, all right, for Admiral Markets, uh, and on Facebook facebook.com they're right there on there is admiral markets global as well go and have a look just go and find out how, how they are and stuff say hello to people they'll be very happy to, uh, to to sort of help you and guide you in any of your any of your particular queries Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we've just got a couple of uh, moments left to, to finish up. As always, there's always lots for us to uh, lots for us to cover. Okay, so uh, you know, try to try to look at uh, what we can do there, and we have a little, we'll have a little look there, okay, and stuff. So um, uh, uh, Anin has asked if uh, if I could explain the engulfing candle better. Uh, Anin, if if you go back, uh, I think it would be maybe. Two, two, three weeks ago, you'll find that the um, you'll find that the the whole the whole session is just about the engulfing candle. All I'm doing there at these is just providing a a little bit of a. Uh, 
providing a, a little bit of a recap, okay, of the of the major sessions that we've gone through. So uh, I think if you look back to sort of uh, about three weeks ago, you'll find that the you know the whole session is on the engulfing uh, the engulfing candle itself, and and that would um, you know that would uh, hopefully that might uh, give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, help or, or assistance in that. I'm um, just trying to see. So if um, if uh, you know if if we had here we go. So I'll just uh, whilst we're here, let me just do this then. Okay, pull it up. So I've just uh, put a, a you know a little line there, okay, a little arrow there. You know that isn't that's an engulfing candle there, okay. And, and you know, how do I know it's engulfing candle? It's, it's you know it's a, it's kind of a few versions of a candle, but it's uh, you know, it's definitely an engulfing candle because you know we've got a bearish engulfing candle at the end of a bull trend. We've had you know uh, the the range of the bar, both the high and the uh, absolute low, encapsulate the range of the preceding bar. So you know we've had you know the the bears have told took control of this market and that's what we have for the you know, for the next for the next uh, you know few weeks and stuff that actually uh the sort of the dax sort of pisses along and, and, and goes sideways and does its own thing and that's um that's what we're at uh, that's what we're interested in okay just making sure that um making sure that everything is uh is, is taken care of uh well and uh well and truly but yep yeah, you know as i said have a look at uh have a look at that and that will uh that will help you uh get your uh, uh um get your view in terms of trying to understand you know uh, engulfing candles in uh, in particular um, I you know we were looking at uh, um, sort of you know examples we, you know, we had a look at the sort of longer term example on gold there okay which we uh, which we've been talking about you know back then if, if those of you join me on the uh, real time daily trading ideas on uh, every Tuesday at 10 o'clock London time okay, that's what we try to sort of look at and talk about that's what we're uh, that's what we're particularly uh, uh, intrigued in uh, and it's with that that that, um, that, that you know we uh, you know, we we um, we're able to sort of uh, share uh, share ideas and uh, thoughts, okay? And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a case of the you know the real time day trading ideas is, is just me showing sort of some of the ideas that we uh, talk and think about that uh, you know and how they uh, how they come about in uh, in our own particular uh, in our own particular trading. So just got uh, a minute or two left there. Okay, I'm just going to sort of uh, bring up a uh, uh, see if there's a, a, any kind of uh, intriguing charts that that uh, that uh, we can you know get interested in. As I said, that was that three bar reverse on the Aussie dollar. Okay, just a few weeks back, we can see that um, that happened a uh, that happened a fair bit. And uh, I've just put on dollar yen, but I think it's um, I suspect it's probably uh, there's probably a good bit of it um, going on there at the uh, at the moment. Okay, so uh, just um, you know it's uh yeah there's just lots going on in the lots going on in that particular uh, um lots going on in that particular market so um you know we'll have a look you know the the you know it's it's a case of you know here, here what i'd be interested in is is you know we see that um we see that uh you know price pushed up and it pushed to new highs to new all-time highs okay not exactly a really uh stellar breakup but what we saw is the next candle was you know and it was an inside bar okay Next candle was an inside bar. It had gone up, okay. It tried pressing up, uh, you know, just it coiled up, okay. Just sort of take its little bit of its, um, little bit of its, uh, you know, a little bit of an inside bar there. And it's actually, you know, so far this week, it's it's continued to to, to go north. And I'd be suggesting you you keep an eye on that over the uh, over the next uh, couple of days. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you. Uh, I hope you found that. Uh, I hope you found that useful. All right. So uh, next week we'll be back again, four o'clock. Okay, Monday, and the. Uh, um, you know, we'll be looking at. I think probably one of the last method sessions. Uh, we're looking about key reversal days and how I use them for some of my trading. So you know what I'd say is you know take away these ideas. You know, they're tools you could use tomorrow that actually you could just walk away go and have a look at your chart see how they have been um, see how they've been performing see how they are printing those particular uh, um, trade setups and, and start to you know practice on, on being able to identify those setups I can now sort of see most of them just automatically just from 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 where I am and it's just uh, it's just um, yeah it's the, you know it's the best way for you to, to learn very very quickly about how to uh, identify these particular uh, these particular setups and ideas. A uh, frail cell there, uh, filters. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very welcome, Phil. I'm glad you. I'm glad you found that. Uh, I'm glad you found that useful. Okay, you know, as always, there's this one. We've got all the other ones in the webinar archive. So, be sure to uh, have a look at them. Be sure to sort of take on board what's uh, what's available for you. And uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, you know we'll uh, a I'll look to speak to you some of you tomorrow on the real time daily trading ideas. Uh, and failing that, I look forward to speaking to you uh, um, next um, next Monday when I'll be in.
Chester, a Chester thing. So um, trade well, everybody. Have a great, uh, have a great week, and I, I look forward to uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, on the next uh, mastering the four M's of trading session, which will be next uh, next Monday at four o'clock London time. Many thanks, everybody. <laughs>